Well, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at the code for the self-balancing robot version two. The code looks quite different to what I first envisaged. It's been through a couple of different versions and quite a bit of debugging, but seems to be working really reliably now. So let's take a look at it now. Okay, so we'll try and keep this fairly short and not too involved. If you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to email me or contact me on Facebook and I can go through any of the code offline. Anyway, let's start at the top. So we've got some defines here that allow us to actually report information on the serial port just to help with debugging. It includes here the I squared C and the MPU and also my little PID loop. Just setting up the digital pins for the indicators and the control of the motor and also the analog pin defines and variable for the state engine, the PID parameters, uh, which you may need to change, but if you've used the same componentry as me, I think that will probably work okay because I think those parameters are pretty much the same as what I was using in the robot version one. So it didn't require retuning. The MPU variables, variables for the motion control, Bluetooth comms, the actual timing of the main loop and setting up the actual PID object and some parameters for the motor control. Okay, so next we get into the actual setup routine, setting up the I squared C bus, uh, setting up the serial port. I wanted to rename my Bluetooth module to be robot. So when I connect using the app, I can just connect to it as robot rather than you know whatever the module came with. So if you uncomment these lines, I found I had to connect to the device and then just uh, give the Arduino a reset using the reset button. Then this will actually change the name of the module and then just comment it out and reload the sketch. Setting up the digital pins as outputs and also setting the indicators to high, which actually turns off the LEDs. Setting up the interrupts for the timed interrupts for the actual motor control, setting up the PID loop, and then initializing the MPU. We're also initializing the DMP in this instance. These are the parameters that we found in the calibration sketch, enabling the DMP. And if all is good, then we exit the setup with the current state set to MPU init. If everything is not good, then we exit with an MPU error. So that's setting up all of the bits and pieces that are required. And the next thing we do is move into the main loop. So in the main loop, the first thing we do is check the serial comms and then check the battery voltage. And then we move into the actual state engine. So I may just look at both those functions. Let's look at the serial comms. Basically the serial comms, check serial comms, just literally reads what's in the serial port. And if a value has come in, then it will use that in the main loop for 21 counts. And then after that, it will reset the received byte back to a null. And the check battery voltage reads the raw value on the analog input and it maps it to looking like a real value. And here's that uh, define that we use for debugging just to be able to send the battery voltage and the raw values out for doing the calibration of the battery voltage. And then we basically just look and say, okay, if the battery voltage is between 800 and 1050, then change the state to battery low and send a message saying that the drive's disabled and the battery is very low. If it's between uh, 1050 and 1070, then we just send out of the serial port battery low and the helper method at the bottom 
is um, just a function for calculating if the value is between a high and a low value. Okay, so let's zip back up to the state engine. So entering the switch statement for the state engine, if we've got an MPU error, then all that's going to happen in this loop is it's going to cycle through turning both indicators on then off for half a second. So it's just a slow flash of both lights indicating that there's an MPU error. If there is a battery low, then it's going to turn on the battery low indicator, the red LED, and turn off the ready LED. If we're an MPU init, which we would normally be if everything's gone okay, the first thing we do is set the motor control to zero so that it's not going anywhere and what we wanted to do is just wait for 10 seconds to let the MPU settle and in that time we just flash the ready indicator on and off and that is not 20 seconds that's 10 seconds now that just runs for 10 seconds at the end of the 10 seconds we set up the loop timer variable and we set the state to starting if we enter the state machine in starting, then first of all, it sets the motors to zero again. It turns on the ready indicator, does a check of the MPU now, and calculates the actual angle. Now, if the angle is between minus 0.5 and positive 0.5, then it will put it into balancing mode. So the idea is leave the robot uh, lying flat, turn it on, uh, wait until the ready light is solid and then tilt it up. And once it gets to an upright position, it will start balancing. So if we look at the state of balancing, again, we check the MPU and get the angle. First of all, we look to see whether the angle is between minus 30 and uh, plus 30. If it is, then we reset the PID and we put it back to starting. We just figure it's toppled over and it's not going to control from there. Else, we calculate the drive signals, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And lastly, we have a default, which if it ever gets in there, it's in a state that's undefined. So we just put it into the MPU error state. That debug defined for uh, sending the angle and control here which dumped out all that data and then we enter the delay for the loop timer so basically just checking to see whether it's time to process again and then setting the loop timer for the next time through so let's look at the check mpu when using the dmp normally it works using the hardware interrupt I found because I was using the hardware and the software interrupts, the motor control was really sketchy. And in the end, I got rid of the hardware interrupt for the MPU and um, using this code here. So getting the FIFO count, if it's equal to 1024, then it's overflowed. So I reset it and just send that out of the serial port. If it's greater than a packet size, then while the FIFO count is greater than the packet size. I just get the values and then reduce the FIFO side in a while loop. So effectively what I do is I unpack all of the packets and the one that's left at the end of it in the FIFO buffer is the last one that it received. And then I use that to actually calculate the your pitch and roll. I found this to be very efficient. In actual fact, I'm not actually getting any FIFO overflows with this code. So it seems to be working really, really well. Okay, so calculate drive signals. This happens when it's in balance mode. We load the angle into the process variable and calculate the loop. The output of the PID is loaded into output left and right. The receive byte is what comes over Bluetooth. So if we're turning left, then we increase the left signal, decrease the right signal. If we're turning right, then vice versa. If we're going forward, then if the set point's greater than minus 2.5, then we reduce it by 0.05. And we also look at the output and the max speed uh, just to make sure that we don't get too carried away. And the same with reverse, but in reverse. And if it's not forward or reverse, then we slowly break it back to not moving. 
And one other thing we have here, if the set point is zero and the output is less than zero, we actually slightly adjust the self balance set point. So what this is trying to do is to just stabilize the robot if there's any offset in the angle. If there's an output one way or the other and the set point is zero, then what's really happening is it's not quite balancing right. So it uses that to just adjust the self balance set point to zero at any errors in the MPU. Okay, now the motor calculations, I think you should take a look at the code description I have for the robot version one, because this is pretty much exactly the same. Because we're using stepper motors, the control signal is non-linear. So what we want to do is make the output signal control the stepper motors in a linear manner. And that's what this code does. I'm not going to explain it here because it is it has been explained previously. So please take a look at that if you need to. Okay, and look, the same for the drive motor interrupt function. That's been explained in the other video. I'd just say go back and have a look at that because it explains it fairly clearly. The only difference from robot version one is I'm using two different output pins because I needed the other output pins for the indicators. I guess the other major component is the PID loop. Look, that's been quite well explained in robot version one as well. So I'd suggest taking a look at that to come to grips with the PID. And there's a lot of information on the web about PID and mine is nothing special. Okay, well, there we go. That's a look at the code. And as I say, if you have any questions or any queries or any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Just get in contact, either a comment on the website or YouTube or contact me on Facebook or even email me. Okay, well, there you go. That's the code as it stands. In the next video, we'll take a look at setting up the robot adjusting the parameters in the code and everything and getting it actually finished. So see you in the next video. Cheers for now. If you like what I'm doing, then please do like the video. If you'd like to see more, then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when I post something new. And I'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at.